Hi, this is Sarinda Jones with Photobella.com and I have a tutorial for you using Copic markers and the Prima dolls that they have out. Um, this is the color scheme that we will be using and let's get right to it. So what I have here is um, the Prima doll and um, she's really cute. I went ahead and stamped her here for us and did a color key of all the colors that we will be using. Um, all the, the numbers and the markings are on the end of the pen and I've listed it in the, in the grid. I do use Memento um, ink when I stamp and use Copic. It tends to not bleed the ink, the black ink lines. Alright, here we go! Before each section I will show you the color key that I'm using. I generally start out with the hair color and it's kind of a sweepy motion so first off I do the base color which um, is the yellow. I'm looking for more of kind of a coppery red look but you, as you go you add more colors. So right now I'm just getting the ink to saturate into the paper. Now I'm going to the next color which is E43 and what I'm doing here is I'm literally sweeping down and then sweeping up and then also keeping in mind that there's going to be a halo where the light is hitting her hair. I continue to go through all the colors until I receive the desired effect that I'm looking for. Also I try to keep the underneath color to show a little bit through the yellow, the lightest color, so that it gives the um, stamp a little bit more dimension. Now this is the darkest color that I'm using and I'm just using it as a shadow effect in the very darkest places that you would see um, and that's E19 that I'm using right there. Okay, so let's get to the skin color. I'm using YR000 and E11 and E15. And what I do is I put the base color down of the YR000 and I'm getting the paper very saturated. This will help with blending and making um, the skin look like skin, <laughs> actually, in the shading part. On the stick figure, um, the arms and the legs are going to take a little bit more care. Now I'm going to fussy cut her out so I don't really, not too concerned about um, staying within the lines. Um, that's a little nutty nut so I don't even worry about it if I'm going to be cutting it off anyhow. So you put down the base coat and then you're going to move, um, you're thinking right here about the sun like where's the shadows going to be on her face. I'm going to have her leaning up against a wall. So the shadow is going to be on the left side of her face, the left side of her arm, and the left side of her legs. So if you think of the light source hitting the front side of her, everything in the front of her dress, um, her legs, her shoes, is all going to be that lightest color, the YR. Zero, zero, zero. So now I'm going in and casting the shadow with the E11 and make sure that you get a shadow of where her dress is because that's very important. Now here I'm going back with the lightest color and blending and again I go over the entire area and what this does is it just blends in that mid-tone color. Now keep in mind her leg is crossed over so the front leg is going to cast a shadow on the back leg. Okay. 
Okay, so here we are. We're going to the darkest skin tone color, which is E15. And this is going to be on the very, very, very left tip, just ever so slightly. And you might think that this looks very dark, but this is what gives the contrast and makes everything look more three-dimensional. As you can see, I'm doing the dress shadow and that seems awfully dark, but once everything comes together and you do the dress and fussy cut her out, it will se seem very, very appropriate to have that there. If you did not, it would look very flat. Now I'm going back in with the E11, which is the mid-tone color, and um, just highlighting, making everything look a little deeper and richer. And you keep going back and forth with the lighter and darker colors in order to get the nice blending. Sometimes you wouldn't necessarily need to do that, um, depending on what you are going for. Since it is a skin tone, I'm, I'm wanting it to blend very nicely. Okay, time to do the dress, and I'm looking for more of a orange color. I know I'm starting out with the Y21 and then moving down to the gradient of the orange color the dress will be. My camera cut out on me, and so I had already gone through the base color, which is YR21, and I just started the highlighting of the YR24. So keep in mind that where your sun is coming from so I go back in and add the mid-tone color as a shadow so the lightest yellow is going to going to be wherever the Sun is hitting so you're kind of thinking in an opposite form Here I'm paying close attention to where the shadow is, where her dress is laying over her leg. And again I go back in with the lightest color and um, blend it in. Now we're going to our second mid-tone color which is YR14. And that's going to be right underneath her armpit and um, again remembering that she's going to be leaning against a wall. So the back side of her is going to be a lot darker. As you can see when I'm going through the mid-tones and the darker colors I have a flicky motion to the pen and that helps to get the texture of the fabric. Now we're moving to our darkest color which is the YR18 and this is just going to be subtle subtle areas. Just a thin line of this color will cast and make the shadow pop and the highlights pop. Noting again the flicky motion that I have with my pen. Okay, I think we're about there. This is looking um, exactly like I had intended, which is always on the plus side. Now we're moving to the accent colors of her shoes and lace and headband. I am using the BV00, BV01, and BV04. I usually usually use three different colors in various, a lighter, a mid-tone, and a dark tone. So here I'm just laying down the base color, not really paying any attention to um, how it is going on. 
Okay, here we're going to go to the midtone, and I'm going to point out her headband where the light source is coming down, so it's going to be darker closest by her ears. And then on the lace, you know, it's actually a really simple stroke. It's kind of a curly cue effect, and it goes really quick. This will give the appearance of texture to the fabric. Now we're going to the darkest color, which is BB04, and it's just simply going in and um, doing the same little doodle scribble on the lace to enhance the fabric look and just a slight hint of darker to uh, the shoes. And here I'm just blending with the lightest color. Alright, I think she's looking pretty good. I hope you can see that very well and let's get to the fussy cutting. I went ahead and fussy cut her out with the scissors around the outside and now I'm going to use the X-Acto blade and cut out the center details. Be very careful when using the X-Acto blade as it is very sharp and um, it's easy to slip and you would, you would not want to get stitches so please take your time with this part. As you can see I turn her around in different areas to get the right angle for the X-Acto blade. In doing the lace, I try to do small triangles in cutting that out and it makes it a lot easier than having to try to fussy cut it. Okay, I think that about does it. She's looking good. And this is her on a black surface. Thank you for joining us and take care.